All right, so I bought one of these melting pots for melting pewter. Um, it came from China, and it has a plug, which might be Australian, might be Asian, some sort might be Chinese. Um, and it's a 240 volt device. Um, I was hoping to use it on 110 volts. We'll see how that works. Um, it came with this little adapter, which will let you plug into a US 110 volt, 15 or 20 amp socket. Um, it only draws 100 watts when you do that. So it doesn't really get hot enough to melt pewter. Um, it's basically a big oversized soldering iron at that point. So what I'm going to do today is replace this plug with the appropriate plug for a US 240 volt circuit. And that plug is one of these. It is a NEMA 615. You could also use a 620, which would have one of these guys rotated 90 degrees um, for a 20 amp circuit, but really that guy only draws like 380 watts max, and so a 15 amp 240 volt circuit is, is more than it needs. The key thing here is it's 240 volts, so we're going to put this plug on that guy. The original plug, this guy here is labeled E for Earth and also has the international ground symbol on it. So we know that guy is hooked up to the ground. So on our new plug, that's going to be ground. The other two, line and neutral, L and N, hook up to these two guys here. Um, doesn't actually matter if we get it right because it's AC and so at 240 volts it doesn't really matter. Um, it'd be good if we can get it right, but it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter. The key thing is that we have three wires in here. I'm not sure what color they're going to use, so it'd be nice to have a hint about which one is the earth because you definitely don't want to hook the earth up to your 240 volt hot. So I have my multimeter in continuity mode and we are going to hope that the metal parts of this guy are actually grounded to the ground. Oh look, good, they are. Now to confirm that the hot parts are not grounded to ground, let me check that. All right, so that's good. Whichever wire has continuity to the metal frame is our ground. I'm not planning on using this plug for anything. I'm throwing it right away, so I'm not going to leave a couple inches. I'm just going to take as much wire as I can get. All right, the actual colors in here are a yellow with a green stripe, blue and brown. Um, I'm going to guess that yellow with green stripe is earth, and these are the two hots, but let's check that. All right, strip the yellow and green, and we have confirmation that is ground, which means these are the hot and neutral or hot and hot in the U.S. split phase system. For this particular style of plug, you remove these three screws here to pull the back off, like so. And also notice on the edge here, I'm not sure if you can see this in the camera view, there's a very nice gauge that says, hey, you want this much insulation and this much wire to hook into these screw terminals. So when we trim the wire and insulation, we're going to make sure the, mat the lengths match here. So this guy here, the brown one, is what you'd call hot. The blue one is what you'd call neutral, but these are 240 volt circuits. Um, and so on our plug here, we have this little red connector here, which I'm going to hook the hot one on, and the neutral one I'm going to hook on this silver one. But it doesn't actually matter if you reverse the two hots here, um, because with 240 volts it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just going to put it in the way I think it should be, just to be complete. The key thing is that the ground goes into the green, which is your ground connector. That's the key thing. Now these are stranded wires. They're supposed to be minimum 14, although I'd say they look a little closer to 16 for me, but you know, China. Um, I'm going to twist them to try to keep all these strands together because you certainly don't want the strands escaping and touching each other inside your plug. There is a pretty decent amount of excess space in there. So I might wrap some black electrical tape around that so I don't have to tighten this completely all the way down and find I don't have any grip on that. Now when you put these wires in, you want the insulation to come right up to that metal bit that grabs it, but you don't want to put the insulation under that because it'll prevent it from making a good connection to the copper. So you want to grab the copper under there, but not the insulation. Now even though you can tighten these screws with a Phillips screwdriver, I like to use a slotted screwdriver to get the last little bit of torque in to really make sure they're torqued down. 
Now a very important safety feature of this plug is that the ground connector is connected to these two little pins and those pins have to line up with the slots for those pins in the back case when you put it together. So they have to go into those holes correctly so that it will ground this entire cover. And I'm just going to throw some electrical tape around the end of this cord. And I'm going to go around enough times to make the cord bigger so that the plug, the back of the plug has something to grip onto to give myself a little bit more strain relief on this plug and make sure it's not going to pull out. Alright, so after we tighten up these three screws here in the front, the only thing left to do is tighten up the two screws that are on the back for the strain relief. And we really got to tighten those down a lot. You can see the electrical tape I put in there to give it something to grip onto. Alright, so as you can see I have those screws down pretty much as far as they'll go until these two pieces of metal are touching. So that'll pinch onto this cord and keep it from pulling out. And there we have it. We now have an appropriate 615 plug for 240 volt use on this device here. Now, the tricky bit is finding a 615 or 620 receptacle that this plug will go into. So the 615 and 620 plugs are typically used for heavy duty window air conditioning units, maybe a fancy 240 volt heater, but they're pretty uncommon in actual American houses. So your best bet is going to be getting an electrician in, tell them I want a 240 volt circuit at either 15 or 20 amps with a 615 or a 620 receptacle at the end of it. If you don't want to do that, you're going to have to find some other outlet in your house that gives you 240 volts. So this might be a dryer receptacle or a range receptacle or an RV outlet or a welding plug. I happen to have a NEMA 1450 welding plug and you can get adapters that'll go from various things down to, in this case, a 20R or 15R receptacle. And so I have purchased an adapter that'll let me plug into my NEMA 1450 outside. The specific adapter I purchased, because it was inexpensive, or at least more inexpensive than others, goes to a 620 receptacle, and it comes from a 650 plug, which is a 50 amp plug, 240 volt plug. Now this is not a 1450, because a 1450 plug has the neutral connector along with it. Um, so what I have is an adapter that'll go from my 1450, to a 650 plug. I already had that for my welder, so that's why I bought this guy, because I already had something that would adapt to it. Alright, so this little device should only draw one or two amps at 240 volts to get the 300 watts it needs for heating this thing up. We're plugging it into a cable that's designed to do more than that, designed to do 50 amps, and that's going to be plugged into this NEMA 1450 on a 50 amp breaker. And what that means is we do not have the appropriate size breaker for the appliance we are using. And that means if something's wrong with this appliance, or if I've made some mistake adapting the plug, we don't want to be holding this thing when we turn it on. So you might notice it was turned off there, and I have here this 50 amp breaker turned off. So now we're going to flip the breaker. Now when we flip the breaker, any excitement is going to happen probably from here on out. So you want to be as far away from that as possible, potentially with arc flash protective gear if you have it. Otherwise, we just flip this thing and hope. Woohoo, everything's fine, which is expected. So you can see here the thing's on. Now we want to figure out how many watts is it actually taking. I happen to have an energy monitor on this circuit. And so I'm only looking at half of the phase, so it's 200 watts on this half of the phase and potentially, assumably, 200 watts on the other side as well. So it's probably close to 400 watts. And I can smell that thing heating up.